Hi there. This week we're going to be analyzing the question, can you infect a computer without opening an email from the point of view of the future? My name is Steve. This is the QA Weekly. This year we are 2022, but we might actually hop up into 2032 and start talking about old code, current code, and future code, because it's actually important to think about this. In 2022, conventional wisdom indicates that getting an email, never opening it, never runs the code that would possibly take over your computer. A lot of mail clients actually scan the code and prevent it from running. So the only other risk would be opening file attachments. Many platforms already scan for that. And in theory, you shouldn't have any viruses. However, none of the scans are 100% and therefore there's always something going through. And this is in 2022. We still have a problem. We have unknown code flaws that are exploitable in old current and future codes and programs. Programming by itself is not the only issue. The code base, the actual code library itself, can also pose risks in the form of vulnerabilities and flaws that can take over. So what ends up happening is if we move all the way up into 2032 and start taking the trajectory of every single company that is mining data to store about you and people that you know, it is possible at one point that nation states and big collectives of groups of malicious people end up developing very specialized code to take over computers using vulnerabilities and data mining scanners that would allow us to have our computers and devices taken over and hacked. It is for this reason why conventional wisdom is not always correct. It is possible to infect the computer without opening an email. It's just very unlikely today. However, unlikely does not mean impossible because everything is possible. Let's explain a little bit about programming. You have multiple layers of coding and I'll make it very simple. You have the code that me and others make and we use languages and the languages that we use have flaws in them. So we always have to code around the flaws. We can make as perfect a program as we can. Invariably speaking, if you don't have one flaw in the code, I'm kind of surprised. But let's say you could make perfect code. And you could also take into account all the flaws in the language libraries that you use because the language libraries themselves can have flaws and vulnerabilities that are supposedly exploitable. Let's say you could do all of that. There's a reason why you can fix one flaw and cause 99 other flaws at the same time. What would have been perfect code from a simple update of the language library can become flawed code through no issues caused by the programmer themselves. This is why updating your software is highly important because that programmer is going to have to go back and check whether all the new flaws are and correct for that and then update the code. And that update you absolutely do want. And it is always going to be this entire cycle of find the flaw, fix the flaw, then find the next flaw, fix that flaw. And over and over and over and over again. And we want to do it before c countries and other malicious groups find these flaws and exploit them in a way that nobody is expecting. And therefore, it is possible, whether it is this year in 2022 or in 10 years from now, it is possible that one day you won't look at the question and say, no, you can't infect a computer without opening an email. You're going to be like, of course, that's why we have these special firewalls out there that scan all the emails before any data mining occurs on any email, just to be safe that some malicious group 
doesn't eliminate all the data. It is possible that one day that might pose an issue. Like this episode if you like it, dislike it if you didn't, and share with those that you think of benefit from this. And don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any questions, comments, suggestions for topics, email me at ask at tqwayweekly.com. Go to my website, tqwayweekly.com, where you can see the show notes on this episode, past others, find other ways of subscribing. And of course, use the contact form to email me directly. And if you want to see me play video games, head over to twitch.tv slash zaxis1981, where I play video games every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern. Thank you for watching and goodbye.